Hello again, I am Blunty. For those thus far unaware, the Nintendo Switch has expandable storage capacity for downloads and saves and downloadable game installs and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, Nintendo have continued their consumer-friendly trend, seen in the 3DS and the Wii U, of using standard SD memory cards. So you're not trapped paying exorbitant consumer hostile and fleeted prices for proprietary memory cards. <coughs> PlayStation Vita. <laughs> In the Switch's case, it's a micro SD card. Same type of memory card you'll commonly see in Android phones and things like GoPros. Unfortunately, because this is a games console, many of the so-called games journalists I've seen in the last couple of weeks writing so-called guides about which SD card you should buy for your Nintendo Switch or where you should buy it, these articles of course usually accompanied by affiliate store links so every time you buy something on their advice they get paid for it. Just a little bit of a conflict of interest, don't you think? have been spreading some truly garbage advice pulled right out of either thin air or possibly right out of their filthy asses because it sure as shit obviously hasn't come from experience. What I've seen so far seems to indicate they know sweet fuck all about SD cards and especially how prevalent crappy knockoffs and counterfeits are and how severe a problem those seemingly bargain priced cards can be. Just ask anyone who owned some of the first GoPros to shoot 4K video how important buying a reputable SD card is and how miserable and frustrating it can be if you cheap out or buy in ignorance of a few simple facts or wind up with a counterfeit card. So, me, as a gamer and a videographer slash photographer who has swam in the dangerous and dark waters of SD cards for quite some time now, here is what you need to know, according to Blunty, your humble but insistent host. <laughs> First, never, ever, and I mean never, ever, ever buy your SD cards from eBay. Now, I like eBay. I use eBay, but not ever for SD cards. There's more counterfeit crap that flows through that seemingly mainstream trustworthy marketplace than you'd possibly believe. It is rife with it. It is lousy with it. There are countless stories of people getting cards of lesser capacity than they were advertised as or marked at. And even more horror stories about failures and reliability issues and above all read and write speed issues from counterfeit cards. Crappy little cheapo cards painted up to fool you into thinking you're getting a high quality SanDisk card for example. So, and once again I cannot emphasize this enough, always buy your SD cards from a local reputable store. There can be no exception to this rule. Please, please trust me on this. You will be happier, I promise you. Any well-known chain camera store or electronics department store is usually the best bet as they're almost guaranteed, of course, to be carrying legitimate cards from official local distributors and be a properly authorized reseller. So if you do, by unfortunate circumstance, have a problem, walking back in for an exchange or refund is much simpler than dealing with a dodgy eBay seller. Now, with that out of the way, there comes the choice of which SD card to actually pick. There's several brands, of course, but you're pretty safe as long as you stick with the big boys. I personally swear by SanDisk. I have been using them personally and professionally, both my cameras and other stuff, for over a decade, and I have literally never been let down by them. Not even once. Which, frankly, alone is statistically impressive, given how many I've owned and how often I use them and how tough a life they tend to get. But if for some reason you don't like SanDisk, maybe you've had a bad experience with them, the other brands worth your time include Sony's SD cards, which I have used, had no problems with, Samsung, which I have never personally used, but Samsung are, of course, one of the biggest producers on the planet of memory chips for all kinds of things. Even my iPhone has Samsung storage in it, I think. So that's probably a pretty safe bet. Lexar and Transcend are also well-established brands, been around for ages, they've got good reputations amongst photographers, although, once more speaking personally, both of those brands, SD cards, have failed me in the past, which is why SanDisk fill all my card pockets. As far as my experience goes so far, SanDisks are, for all intents and purposes, metaphorically bulletproof. Lastly, and of course most vitally, there's speed. 
SD cards come in various substandards, bus modes, and speed classes. There is SD, SDHC, SDXC, SDHC UHS, SDXC UHS classes 2, 4, 6, and 10 are commonly found, or UHS and UHS 2 mark 1 or 3. Then, yes, this is all ridiculous. Ridiculously complicated and annoying and bewilderingly confusing, not just for the layman out there, God help those guys, but even the experienced amongst us get utterly perplexed by it all sometimes. But don't panic. You don't need to understand any of those acronyms. In this context, all you need to keep in mind is that for the Nintendo Switch, you'll be wanting an SDXC or an SDHC UHS-1. These are both very commonly available in a variety of sizes and are priced competitively and affordably. Most often they'll be marked for camera use as Full HD Video Compatible or 4K video compatible as a slightly more consumer-friendly way of indicating their speed capability, as of course 4K video needs to write lots more data all at once than a 1080p video recording does. The two main examples I'm showing you here are the SanDisk Ultra in 64GB and the SanDisk Extreme in 32GB. Now, despite the Ultra being nearly twice the capacity, these two cards are actually priced nearly identically. $30 and $39 in Australian dollar terms, or about $22 to $30 of the Dark Lord Trump's currency units. And the difference is simply that the Extreme is faster. The marketing for speed on these cards is also something to be a little bit wary of. They almost always only list the up to speed for reading from the card, which is the larger number, and not the almost always significantly slower write speed. In the case of camera use, where write speed is far more important, this is obviously very annoying. In the case of the Switch, where it'll spend much more time reading data from the card to load your games and your media and such, then it will spend writing small save game files or saving out downloaded content, which is a once per title kind of deal, you know. This number is actually slightly more useful, but it is still not the full real world truth of it. So what you're seeing on screen right now is some speed tests showing the real world read and write performance of the SanDisk Extreme, the SanDisk Ultra, and for the sake of some perspective, a common garden variety 8GB Class 4 micro SD card. The same type you'll often see in bargain bins for just a small fistful of dollars. In this case, it is once again a SanDisk card. And it is this type of seemingly amazing deal that snags and deceives and traps many unknowing and ignorant consumers into what you can very plainly see for yourself is a vastly slower performance set. Now, we don't yet know the full technical specifications of the Nintendo Switch's SD Reader, because Nintendo are very annoying like that when it comes to just bloody listing simple relevant technical specs. We do know, however, it is documented as an SDXC reader, and the Nintendo branded SD cards they themselves will be offering, for an inflated price surely, are also SDXC cards. So it may be that investing in the significantly faster Extreme variant card here will be a waste of money, because if the reader can't take advantage at its own basic hardware level of these potential speeds, then you've wasted your money. The card will still work perfectly in every way, it just won't ever reach its full potential speeds. So basically you've paid for speed you can't use. However, if the Switch's card reader can take advantage of that extra performance, well, actually it's unlikely to make a very noticeable difference in your gaming experience in the real world anyway. The Switch's Wi-Fi, for example, is unlikely to be fast enough to saturate that write speed when downloading a game anyway, and the read speed for loading up content, games and levels, while it could be a measurable difference, it very likely won't be a dramatic one. So, having walked all the way down this path, the final advice boils down to this. If you've budgeted X amount of dollars for a micro SD card for your new Nintendo Switch, spend it on a larger SanDisk Ultra card the SDXC UHS-1 Class 10, instead of a potentially faster SanDisk Extreme card, the SDHC UHS U3. Like I said, even if the Switch does have sufficient hardware to use the extra speed, in the context of how it will be used, it won't really matter much, if at all. So you are better off getting more space for your dollar rather than faster space for your dollar. But absolutely do invest in a good quality fast card. 
Sure, the slow ones will probably work just fine, and maybe you think your time has no value, so waiting a little bit longer for stuff to save or write or load up is no big deal. But remember, you're on a portable hybrid device, so when you're away from your dock, the more time you wait for stuff like that to happen, the less actual gaming you're going to get done per battery charge. Small weights add up, and writing data slowly chews up a bit more battery power than a quick burst. And when it comes to capacity, how big of a card should you choose? Well, we really don't know much about how the Switch will be using the SD card, and what kind, and how much, and how large the data it'll want to keep there will wind up being. Again, Nintendo's annoying habit of not releasing useful and practical information to consumers makes me want to slap them into low Earth orbit. But my advice for now is to do what I have done. Go for the 64 gigabyte. It is inexpensive, it is very easy to get, and it should be quite sufficient for a pretty large variety of virtual console titles and the like. Even if we get a ton of GameCube games on the virtual console, fingers crossed for that, the GameCube discs themselves could hold no more than 1.4 gigabytes, or 1.35, I think it was, if I remember correctly. So that is still more than 40 of those games alone on a 64 gigabyte card. You'll be fine. If, however, you're planning to buy most of your Switch games as downloads, rather than the cute little physical media game cards, then of course you want to just get the largest microSD card you can possibly afford. The specification for SDXC supports up to 2 terabytes, but the largest capacity you're likely to find available right now in the microSD world is the 256 gigabyte ones. And for those, you'll be spending somewhere in the realm of $200 to $300 depending on where you buy it, what brand it is, and what currency you're using, and all that kind of stuff. For some, it may be worth spending that much. For most, I'm betting the 64 gigabyte one will be quite sufficient. Thanks for watching. Hope this has been interesting and useful. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.